Hey, what's up? This is David Benjamin from HealthyWildFree.com. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the dangers of anti-nutrients. This is something that took me years to learn and in my past life, not literally, but within the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years, whatever it was, I used to be a vegan, I was a vegetarian, I was also a fruitarian for a bit. So I had a lot of experience eating raw fruits and vegetables and that was the majority, that was pretty much my entire diet for different seasons of my life, whether it was three months, six months, uh, or whatever it may be. So uh, the point of this video is to educate you on the dangers of being a vegan, vegetarian, or fruitarian, and to understand truly what anti-nutrients are. So anti-nutrients are plant chemicals that they produce in order to protect themselves from being uh, ravaged, from being eaten, right? So these are plant, uh, these are chemicals like oxalates, lectins, phytic acid, uh, saponins and others. And these chemicals, what they do in the body is they bind to minerals and vitamins and make it harder for the body to absorb these nutrients. So a lot of minerals and uh, things that are really crucial for human health, such as iron and zinc and magnesium and calcium uh, and many other nutrients will quite literally get bound up to these anti-nutrients and then they create issues in the body because your body is supposed to absorb these nutrients but instead of that happening what's occurring is your body is getting a blocked pathway essentially the anti-nutrient is uh, disrupting that normal nutrient uptake in your body and this becomes problematic over time so there are different uh, strategies that you can utilize to still eat foods that contain anti-nutrients However, it does take more time, more preparation, more understanding, and if you don't do these things and you are a vegan vegetarian or you're eating more of a plant-based diet, you might have too many anti-nutrients in your diet, which will cause you uh, to have nutritional deficiencies in the long run. So I would recommend several different approaches, several different tactical things that you can do, and then there's even a, an overarching strategic strategy that you can utilize to get the most out of the fruits. Uh, well, it's not really fruits, but it's more so uh, seeds, nuts, beans, uh, and vegetables that are, uh, and some spices and herbs actually. Interestingly enough, there's some spices and herbs I just recently found out contain anti-nutrients. And a lot of people utilize, utilize these on a daily basis. So I'll actually put a link below to an article with the top five spices and herbs that are rich in anti-nutrients, which is a bad thing. And if you're consuming all of these or you know multiple of these different spices and herbs on a day-to-day -day basis, you might want to tone that down and sort of alternate and rotate them in and out. So with that being said, there are four key strategies or four key tactics that you can deploy in order to reduce the anti-nutrient uh, composition of the foods that you're eating and allow your body to get more nutritional value from the food that you are ingesting. So number one, the first thing that you can do is soak. You can soak these foods in water. Uh, typically it's a, a 12 hour soaking period. This is great for like uh, different seeds and nuts and grains, um, oats, things like this. You can just simply soak it in water for a period of time and each one is going to be different. So the, the point of this video is to give you more of a strategic understanding of the hierarchy of how nutrients work. And then you can explore these different sort of pathways individually. So the first thing you can do, soak your foods that contain anti-nutrients and by doing this you can decrease your anti-nutrient uh, absorption or anti-nutrient levels in these foods by up to 60 percent so right there alone you can get rid of the the majority of these anti-nutrients in the foods that you're consuming the next thing that you can do is ferment so soak is number one that's just simply soaking in water the next thing that you can do is ferment or culture so fermentation introduces a bacteria that helps to break these anti-nutrients down. And you can quite literally, if you soak and then ferment, you can go from up to 60% of anti-nutrients be, being removed to up to, I think it's like 83%. So right there with those two things, you can pretty much avoid the anti-nutrient uh, damage that will be caused on your body if you're eating these foods without soaking these things and without fermenting them. And a lot of people eat these things, like within the raw food community especially, a lot of people eat raw foods without soaking and without fermenting because they don't understand the science of how soaking works and how fermenting works. And if you pair those two things together, they are incredibly powerful. Uh, the third thing that you can do to reduce the, the anti-nutrient intake in the foods that you're eating is to simply sprout them. So there's different uh, seeds, for example, like chia seeds is a perfect example. 
chia seeds, many people will just throw them raw into a smoothie. There's a lot of phytic acid in chia seeds. So by just simply eating raw chia seeds, you're actually giving your body an anti-nutrient that's gonna make it harder to absorb certain minerals and vitamins. So all that you do is you take the chia seeds, you put them in a glass jar, put water in it, stir it up, shake it up, and just keep kind of stirring it. And you soak those chia seeds until it becomes gelatinous. Uh, and that's, that's the soaking element of it. But you can also take those same chia seeds, plant them in organic soil, water them a little bit each day and grow sprouts. And those sprouts are gonna have less anti-nutrients and chlorophyll as well. So additional nutrients. So not only do you remove anti-nutrients, but then you're giving your body other uh, healthy nutrients that are beneficial. And the last thing that you can do is simply cook or, or boil or you know heat up uh, these different foods that contain anti-nutrients, and this will remove uh, some of their anti-nutrients as well. So let's recap real quickly. Different foods that contain anti-nutrients, such as phytic acid, oxalates, which are horrible. Oxalates bind to calcium and create these crystals in your body. This can lead to kidney stones and all sorts of calcification issues with, within the body. Um, saponins, uh, what else do you have? Um, uh, oxalates, I think I said that. But there's a variety of anti-nutrients. You can look up the, the, uh, all of the different anti-nutrients that are in different seeds, grains, beans, things like that. And if you simply soak, ferment, sprout, or cook, those four things, so just remember soak, ferment, sprout, or cook, you can reduce that anti-nutrient intake, and in some cases even increase your nutritional output within them. For example, tomatoes, which is a nightshade vegetable, you're reducing your anti-nutrient intake, but you're also increasing the bioavailability of lycopene, the main antioxidant in tomatoes that are beneficial for heart health. So there's certain foods, uh, a lot of plants, right? A lot of uh, fruit, well, I guess that's a fruit, different, more so vegetables, beans, seeds, nuts, um, and some uh, fruits as well, contain these anti-nutrients. And if you're just eating them raw because you've been told online, eat raw foods and you know, eat a, become a vegan or vegetarian and have a raw food diet, you're unfortunately going to, going to harm your health and your nutritional levels over time. So remember to soak, ferment, sprout, or cook the foods that are high in anti-nutrients. And overall, just reduce these anti-nutrient foods in your diet and don't have a lot of these foods in your diet. So in order to kind of further uh, support you on this journey, on this path, I'm gonna to link to uh, fermentationmethod.com below. Fermentationmethod.com teaches you how to ferment different foods. It teaches you how to make sourdough bread. It teaches you how to ferment different vegetables and create more probiotics. This is going to reduce those anti-nutrients, increase, increase your probiotic content, which improves your digestive health. And it's just really one of the best things you can do is fermentation. So I will link to fermentationmethod.com below. I highly recommend going through um, that course and learning how to utilize these things if you are a vegan, vegetarian, raw foodist, whatever it may be, because that's gonna help you more than anything. And then additionally, uh, just remember, soak, ferment, sprout, or cook, and also reduce the anti-nutrient foods in your diet. Additionally, there are some herbs and spices such as turmeric, uh, a ginger, clove, cinnamon, that actually are high in anti-nutrients. And I just recently found this out and I was kind of shocked by this, so I'm going to link to an article below with more information on those spices and herbs because these are the kind of in the trenches things that a lot of people miss and they think, oh, I'm not eating anti-nutrients, but they're every day they're doing like a lot of different spices and herbs and things that contain anti-nutrients. So reduce those or cycle them in and out and just don't have a lot of anti-nutrients in your diet on a day-to-day -day basis. So all of those resources will be linked up below. Once again, my name is David Benjamin from HealthyWildFree.com. If you want to learn more about health and wellness and get a weekly newsletter, subscribe to the Healthy Wild Free newsletter at HealthyWildFree.com and follow us on all our social media platforms. Have an amazing rest of the day. Cheers.